click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous one we have discussed about the extraction of iron from hematite and now in this topic we are going to talk about the electrolyting method for the extraction of aluminum. So now let's get started. So friends, in this topic, we are going to talk about electrolyting method for the extraction of aluminum. So for that, we need a particular container that should consist of anode and cathode along with that of the electrolyte. So in this case, basically, we are extracting the aluminum. So the aluminum can be obtained from alumina, that is Al2O3. It could be also obtained from the creolite, that is Na3, F6 along with that of we can also extend it from that is ALF3 so these are the particular ores from which we can obtain that is aluminum or we can extract aluminum from electrolytic method so therefore we have to consider a particular container and that container is nothing but it is made up of iron so that container should also consist of anode as well as cathodes along with that of this are the one that will act like an electrolyte so not along with this but we will also add certain kind of substance which will increase the conductivity or thereby which will increase thermal ability to convert those ores into their corresponding that is metals so this is what i'm going to talk about so let us understand a particular diagram and based on that we are going to understand that is how the electrolytic method of the extraction of aluminum is been done let us understand that is how basically aluminum can be extracted from electrolytic method so for that we have a particular diagram here so therefore it is an electrolytic cell for the extraction of aluminum so in this case here it is a basically a container which is made up of iron or it is an iron container and in which basically we can see that is a carbon lining is also been present over here which is acting like a cathode and this rods that is multiple rods are there even they are made up of carbon so they are for they are acting like anode and this is nothing but a copper clamp that is basically connected and this is a copper clamp that connects all those anodes and this copper has a positive charge that by making this anodes to be having a positive charge while this carbon lining which is of basically made up of carbon this it is acting like a cathode and it will acquire a negative charge and this two are basically connected through an external source so since the electrolyte or the solution that has been present over here is basically molten Al2O3 and Na3AlF6 along with that of the other reagents also for example if I would say like fluorspar so they all are present in this solution making this solution to act like an electrolyte and from which we can easily extract the aluminum and we also understand that is the aluminum will be deposited on the cathode because we understand that is on cathode reduction takes place and on anode that is oxidation takes place so therefore all the aluminum that would be extracted electrolytically so they all will be deposited on this cathode and thereby we can get the molten aluminum from here and all the remaining that is slag or all the remaining impurity that will be in the solution itself and here you can see there is powder ore that is on the surface of this electrolyte or on the surface of the solution the reason why that is we are adding this so as to avoid the oxidation of the aluminum and thereby it is also used for that is to prevent the escape of the heat and that's the reason that this all is what i have discussed about the electrolytic cell for the extraction of aluminum so what are the reactions that takes place in this cell even this is the most important thing that i want to talk about so now let us understand those reactions that takes place in the electrolytic cell for the extraction of aluminum so during the extraction of aluminum by electrolytic method the temperature that we have maintaining is basically 1150 kelvin so in that case basically in this temperature every kind of that is metal or every kind of ore it will be basically in a molten form that is i'm talking about the ore which has basically aluminum in it so that is the reason that we are using the other reagents also like cf2 that is flow spark not only decreases the temperature fusion but also increases the conductivity so thereby we can find that is the overall reaction that takes place in the electrolytic cell because it also consists of alumina so that's the reason that the overall reaction that is i'm writing over here the overall reaction that takes place over here is that is 2 al 2 o3 
that is alumina whenever it has been reacted with carbon because in this case we are also using or we are also sprinkling carbon on the surface of the electrolyte or on the surface of the molten solution so in that case this carbon it will be very much helpful so as to reduce this Al2O3 thereby we can obtain that is four moles of aluminium and the rest of the thing it will be removed in the form of carbon dioxide so thereby we can obtain aluminium by using that is by using carbon so this is the overall reaction but there are also other reactions that takes place so this is also what i want to talk about so for example not only al2o3 but also like creolite is the thing that has been present in the solution in the bottle form so that's the reason that suppose if i'm talking about that is creolite that is na3 al f6 so this which is obviously at a high temperature obviously it will dissociate so that's what the dissociation will be in such a manner that is we could get that is na naf that is three moles of naf along with that of the rest of the thing is alf3 so this alf3 that is basically present in the solution even this can be reduced and thereby we can obtain aluminum from that so that's the reason that we are considering the anodes and cathodes so this is alf3 even this alf3 can be dissociated into that is al3 plus and 3f minus ions so now because of this alf3 has been dissociated into its respective ions so now this ions will be undergoing through oxidation and reduction so based on that let me give you an example related to what happens or what is the reaction that occurs at anode and what is the reaction that occurs at cathode so then for the reaction that occurs at cathode and anode are as follows so we understand that is at cathode reduction takes place and at anode oxidation takes place so in this case basically the alf3 that has been dissociated into al3 plus as well as that is 3f minus ions so out of which basically al3 plus ions it will accept three electrons so as to reduce into al that is aluminum so while the rest of the thing that is fluorine that is in the form of f minus it will be oxidized so as to get f along with that of e minus but we understand that is fluorine doesn't exist in the form of a monoatomic state so obviously we have to balance it so that's the reason that we are balancing here so therefore this will be 2f minus that will give us f2 along with that of two electrons but here also we can see that is there is three electrons and here it is basically two electrons so to balance it we'll multiply this by two making this to be having six electrons and even this will be nothing but two moles of aluminum and talking about this thing so even we will multiply it by three so therefore this will be nothing but six moles of f minus that would be giving us that is three moles of f2 minus along with that of six moles of electron so therefore the overall reaction that takes place over here is that is two moles of al3 plus plus in this case we see six moles of f minus it will combine with each other so as to form that is two moles of al and three moles of f2 so this is how basically we can obtain aluminum and this aluminum will be deposited on the cathode that is basically at like a carbon lining on the iron container but what about this f2 even this f2 plays a very vital role because in the electrolytic solution or in the solution which is of molten state it also consists of that is al2o3 and the other that is chemicals or the other ores so this f2 will play a very vital role in converting those ores to extract the aluminum so what are those reactions let me discuss about that so the alumina that has been present in the molten form that is al2o3 so in this case two moles of al2o3 it will be reacted with six moles of f2 and in that case basically the product that is what we could get is four moles of alf3 along with that of that is three moles of o2 so this alf3 that has been produced even this will undergo through a that is redox reaction and that is how basically we can obtain aluminum from that and again fluorine will be that is evolved that fluorine will be participating in the reaction to convert that is al2o3 into alf3 again so this is how basically we can obtain that is aluminum along with that of oxygen but this oxygen that is basically produced in the reaction it will react with the carbon or it will react with the coke so in this case basically the oxygen that is what we are using that is o2 and obviously this reaction will take place at the anode so therefore it will react with that is carbon of that is anode and that is how basically we can obtain that is two moles of carbon monoxide so now this two moles of carbon monoxide that is basically produced in the reaction itself or with in the solution so in this case two moles of carbon it will react with 
other moles of oxygen atom that is being produced here and that is how basically we can obtain two moles of CO2 and this CO2 that is being produced it will escape through the container and that is how basically and the only thing that will be left in the solution is molten aluminum is aluminum and the other impurities and those other impurities can be easily that is it can be removed and that is how obviously we can extract aluminum by electrolytic method so therefore this was the topic related to the extraction of aluminum by electrolytic method so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe channel. thank you so much